Hans is my partner Nandi, and we're here to discuss uh, the solutions we propose to evolve. Uh, this is a layout of our presentation where we'll discuss the partnership criteria of evolve, then we'll uh, analyze the allocation of resources, and finally we'll explore the regions that uh, we can give all to look at and potential partners. The uh, first thing of exploration is the current partnership criteria that Google uses. And we believe that the current partnership criteria is too focused on achieving a standard and not really considering uh, that NGOs have limitations and that it should be more specific based. We propose that um, the that E approaches the NGOs in a different way by dividing them in three tiers. According to the way that I mean, because this has been a serious problem for the only. The first tier we propose uh, will include NGOs with a reliable internet connection and access to a scanner and a camera, and we require them to provide four updates a year. The second tier will contain NGOs with a limited internet connection, with no scanner and a capsule camera, and we require them to provide between two to four updates a year. And finally, the third tier, uh, the third tier will include those NGOs that do not have access to internet connection, a scanner, or a camera. And they will be required to, have to provide between one and two updates a year. This is important because sometimes donors feel that when, when NGOs are not able to provide the, the number of updates that they are required, which uh, currently are four, don't feel discouraged. So we also take into consideration the donors. This is a profile of the students. We have added our proposal, which is to show the donors what are the limitations and capabilities of the NGOs. This will further encourage transparency. The donors have to know what are the limitations and what to expect from each of these NGOs. So uh, the final effect of this proposal will be that uh, the partners will apply as they are applying now and through, through the process that was mentioned in the documents sent by Yvonne. And then they will be screened and finally they will be classified into one of these three tiers according to their technological capabilities. And then the donors will be informed of which are the limitations of each of these NGOs. So in the end, the partners will be happy because they will be able to meet the requirements and the donors will be happy because they will receive a number of uh, updates promised and they will they won't lose the this emotional bond with the students. The second area of exploration is actually the efficient allocation of resources, whether we should be allocating resources to projects or actual individual students. Uh, we actually divided this into a pros and cons table. So the pros and cons of student focus. The pros, uh, sorry, the pros are that the donors feel personally responsible for a single child. There is a relationship and a personal connection between the donor and uh, the individual student that Givali holds extremely important as for its business plan. And the money provided must be allocated solely to one entity. So instead of $500 going to 200 students, it's going to only one. However, the cons of the student focus are that donors may feel neglected if they do not receive constant updates. Also, there is a greater difficulty in obtaining regular updates from one student than there would be with 200. And students also do not seem to give back to Givology um, in the long run once they've actually received a significant monetary contribution. Now, the pros and cons of a project focus. The pros of a project focus are that you have a greater social impact just in terms of sheer numbers. Uh, there is an efficient allocation of donors in that there are several donors helping several students rather than just several donors to individual students. And there is a greater ability to track the success of the project beyond the initial monetary contribution. As in five years down the line, you can go back to the site with your Givology fellows and see that, okay, the school is still standing there, the students seem happy, they seem to have had some kind of impact. The cons, however, are that as of right now, there is a lack in the direct personal uh, contact. The current pages on the projects are not as compelling as those of uh, individual students, and the transparency becomes crucial because now donors are being asked to contribute to the project rather than one steady face that they become familiar with. 
My partner, Julio, and I, however, decided to put in a decision in favor of the projects. These are some calculated statistics from the Gibology website and the case documents that we were provided with. Now, the current number of projects is 20, whereas the individual students are 74. The average number of students assisted in individual scenarios, as in per project, is 200, whereas one individual student is only just one individual student. The average number of donors per project is 7.6, whereas the average number of donors per an individual student is almost exactly the same. However, and this is where the real kicker lies, the ballpark of total students helped is 4,000 per project, which is almost 50 times more than the impact of just helping one individual student. Uh, in addition, there would be the minimization of aid overlap. For example, Ben and a student currently being helped by Nivology is a student at the Circle of Peace School. Now, the Circle of Peace School actually requires $3,000 to stop themselves from being evicted and uh, uh, to find themselves a new location. Without this school, then it would actually have no future education possible. If you notice the number um, that Ben needs in required funding, he requires $360. Whereas Circle of Peace School requires 3,000. Now, if we were to transfer the focus onto the Circle of Peace School, we would actually provide them with 12% more funding if we were to transfer this $360 from Bennett to the Circle of Peace School. And this not only helps 200 additional students, it also indirectly helps them. Also, another important aspect of focusing on projects is increasing the personal touch between the donors and the students being helped by these projects. So right now, there's currently no personal interaction. With our Faces Behind the Project initiative, in which a donor would be paired with um, a student currently being helped out by the project, we would actually send the donor updates based on the tier capabilities of uh, the partner. And in effect, you would have no loss of personal touch, and donors would still be able to see who they're interacting with. Okay, the solution actually has a formulaic approach as of right now. So the formula is that the number of individual students that should be helped is equal to an optimal ratio times the number of given projects. The optimal ratio would be determined by the um, number of, well, would be determined by the Givaldi statistics once Givaldi has been in existence for a few more years. And the formula should be, should hold, except in regions of limited project availability. So if there really are um, no projects currently available in a certain region, then you should focus solely on individual students. What this does is it curtails the individual student focus, it provides more donors for projects, and results in a greater social